Jyotindra, a very, very warm welcome to you to this evening's event, which you have so graciously agreed to be a part of and to give us your deliberations on a topic that you have been working for some time. Thank I you. welcome you on behalf of the chairman and the trustees of the CSMBS, on behalf of the executive committee and myself of the Museum Society of Bombay. And Jyotindra, I wish this lecture was taking place at the museum, which is what we had attended to when we started discussing it about a year ago. And unfortunately, our plans have been uh, subverted. <laughs> but we are all safe and I hope you're safe as well. And I take this opportunity to welcome you and uh, Dr. Yuta, who is with us on the talk and wish both of you from all of us a very, very happy new year. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our 80th Zoom meeting since lockdown was declared on the 20th of March, 2020. And Jyotindra, yours is the first lecture of this year. It's the 81st lecture. So I'm really pleased. It's an auspicious beginning with you. And thank you so very, very much for joining us, combating the technicalities of working on Zoom. But I'm sure we'll be able to navigate everything very peacefully and in a happy way. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Jyotindra Jain in our midst. He's going to be speaking to us this evening, collage and montage as a visual strategy, reconfiguring the divine and the political in Indian popular visual culture. It's a subject that he has been researching and working on, if I may be humble enough to say Jyotindra to you, in a very diligent and systematic manner. And as this evening unfolds, you will see why I mentioned this right at the beginning. A few words about Jyotindra, who needs no introduction, but he has done so many things in his life. And he sent me a long CV. And this afternoon when we were doing our technical rehearsal, he said, please use the shorter one. So out of respect, I'm going to call out the shorter one and just to mention those who are joining us for the first time, those who are students who are joining us, who are beginning to appreciate and understand your scholarship and where you have come from over these last 40 years. Dr. Jyotindra Jain, formerly director of the National Crafts Museum, an iconic institution. I won't say anything more about that because sometimes my heart goes a bit a flutter when I talk about it. He's a professor of arts and aesthetics at the Jawaharlal Nehru, Nehru University, JNU, and member secretary of the Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts. He was a visiting professor at Harvard University, USA, and at Humboldt University, Berlin. He's a distinguished Getty professor at JNU an eminent scholar of the Indian arts. Professor Jain has extensively published in the areas of his specialization and curated exhibitions shown in some of the most respected institutions in India and abroad. A recipient of the prestigious Prince Klaus Award for Culture, which is established in the Netherlands, and he got this in 1998, and the Cross of the Order of Merit from the Federal Republic of Germany in 2018. Professor Jain is a fellow of the Asiatic Society of Mumbai. So he is really a scholar scholar and we are really grateful that you have agreed once more to address. Topic, a few words about what we're going to be hearing this evening. Jyotindra will discuss how an eclectic range of imagery from the changing world of colonial India became instrumental in evolving a visual language of collage and citation, which in turn acted as a vehicle of cultural force, creating and negotiating interstices between the sacred, the erotic, the political, and the colonial modern. 
To this aim, Professor Jane will analyze a number of collaged pictures framed and displayed in the palatial homes of merchants of the Shekhavati region in Rajasthan. In these collages, imported prints of European landscapes or scenery painted by artists from Natadwara in Rajasthan, which often mimicked the colonial mansions of their patrons and were used as a background over which figures cut out from popular prints depicting religious or nationalist subjects were superimposed to very tactfully reconfigure the images and their meaning. I don't wish to stand between Dr. Jane and our audience this evening. We have lots of people who are known to all of us listening in. Thank you everyone, students and patrons and members and friends of the Museum Society for joining us this evening. Last but not the least, as I said, this is our 81st Zoom lecture. And ladies and gentlemen, this is not possible without the support of the technical team. I'm so grateful to our young techs who join us week after week, ably led by Professor Jason Johns from your alma mater, Jyotindra, the Xavier's College, and Dr. Anita Rane Kothari, who will be giving the vote of thanks at the end of the evening, and the tech team, Mrinalini, Aishwarya, and Yashraj. Thank you, team, for being with us, hand-holding us through these difficult times, and we greatly, greatly appreciate it. So without much ado, tech team, please share the full screen with Dr. Jyotindra Jain. And thank you, Jyotindra and Yuta, for this wonderful honor that you are doing us this evening. Thank you very, very much. to the Museum Society in Bombay and uh, all my friends, ladies and gentlemen who joined this evening. I so much miss coming to Bombay. I grew up in Bombay and uh, after spending 40 years in Delhi, I still think that Bombay is the city to which I belong. So I, I'm still, and always I felt like an outsider here. And I really, as Firoza said, it would have been wonderful to be personally present and uh, uh, do my talk over there and meet all the friends, but maybe uh, in the near future, hopefully we'll do that. Now, <clears throat> the title of my talk this evening, as you can see in front of you, Collaged Identities, Reconfig uh, Reconfiguring the Divine and the Political. Now, the title sounds very bombastic and frightening, but just don't worry about it because it's a very simple, uh, simple topic about how in a particular region of Rajasthan like Shekhavati and particular communities, uh, community of Vaishnav Agarwal, the, the Marwadi traders who uh, lived there, how they patronized a particular form of, uh, of visuals or pictures, which were kind of collaged meaning there was a background a picture and then cut out images were put over to over uh, uh, the background picture. Now, what is so big about this kind of collage and why do we talk about it and why do I work on it? You see, collage is a, is a very complex and complicated thing in that sense that you take one existing image, let us say the background, and then you take an image, you cut out something strategically and put together uh, in such, why I'm saying strategically is that collage, uh, the, the image that is cut out and pasted comes with its own baggage. And when it is juxtaposed, it creates new meaning. Uh, the juxtaposition itself creates new meaning because it is now, it, uh, it is transformed into another space and is juxtaposed next to other characters. And this becomes very strategic uh, in, in the collages of, Shekhavati, and it has uh, then uh, uh, it has political, religious uh, in, uh, connotations, and this we'll go into as I take uh, the uh, various examples. I have be, these collages I have collected from the various towns of Shekhavati region. Shekhavati is not a place, but it is a name of a region in north, approximately northwestern Rajasthan. And there were 
amazing kind of havelis and palatial buildings which were built by by the uh, by the traders who lived there once upon a time and who later on shifted to calcutta because they initially worked as banyan for the british companies and later on became the masters of these companies and they were uh, they became some of them most of them became really uh, millionaires uh, through this indo colonial trade that was happening and they patronized these collages and they uh, commissioned these collages uh, so we will be talking about uh, this um, uh, today now let me first tell you what is collage now uh, it is uh, it comes from a french word uh, and uh, it has uh, 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 i mean it has the connotation of uh, or putting together or pasting together or hang, uh, literally uh, it, you know it means uh, to collate for example you know the word collate or to collaborate or to collide all these words are related to collage meaning coming together so the french word collage has various meanings literally it means sticking or gluing putting uh, putting somewhere on a board or somewhere so bringing together two things but this is literal but colloquially the meaning is very interesting and more relevant to what i'm going to do today the word collage colloquially uh, uh, in oxford dictionary for example uh, it also means having an affair or an unmarried couple living in sin there a very christian connotation uh, in this that unmarried couple living together in sin meaning togetherness coming together and collage also two things coming together so but just see the meaning how it works here uh, unmarried couple living in sin the the collo colloquial uh, usage as i mentioned is apt in the context of visual and verbal conven uh, conventions and tradition for example uh, in cubist collages you know the uh, the modernist movement of cubism dadaism or even surrealism for example in western countries uh, uh, in in these uh, cubist collages from 1912 onwards words and images cohabited now cohabit has a very erotic connotation also but and as as i said this colloquially it does mean that so the images and words they cohabit together and producing a new combination and new context rabindranath tagore for example was working with his poems and along with those poems he was doing drawings and therefore in a way it was a collage so uh, coming together of two different uh, disciplines or two different uh, entities literary and visual so uh, they produce novel combinations and context here the conventions of high art and now in western art in cubism and particularly dadaist because there was this uh, whole social upheaval coming of uh, 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 marxism and thing so there was a, a there was a big social conflict and in that situation this refers to popular culture and is found in intimate so the 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 high culture and elements of popular culture uh, found them together in a, in a kind of intimate embrace so this was like in western uh, uh, collages and had lot of political because uh, the cubist the surrealists they were all uh, deeply involved with politics and uh, particularly uh, most of the artists that time were marxists now you see in front of you an image uh, next uh, next please yeah now you see in front of you an image and uh, uh, you can read one of the objectives of modernist collage was to critique intervention of the debris of everyday life in bourgeois no you see the word bourgeois very marxist word that was used that time everyday life in bourgeois notions of high culture through transgressive juxtapositions so the material that came from the road side from the street popular uh, 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 culture and how it entered uh, some kind of in a juxtaposition it entered uh, the bourgeois culture or the establishment culture and that is where i think artists like uh, like uh, uh, 
Rauschenberg or Picasso or many others were working, or mainly Cubist artists were working. So here you see how Western collage was using this for particularly for expression of political and social uh, uh, phenomena of that uh, time. And uh, uh, so it was a kind of confronting a capitalist art establishment by bringing in the, uh, in the refractory material from the street. So this was in the Western thing. But Indian collages do not have anything in common with this ideology, but still there was in Shekhawati a phase when collages were pre, uh, made and were used in homes. So what was the Indian context of collage? That is what is the topic of my uh, lecture this uh, evening. Uh, next, please. Yeah, so now collage in Indian popular culture. Now these uh, uh, collages, Kind of here, as you see, right side on top, there is a, a, a painted uh, uh, Nathadwara painting, there is, and showing a, a, a palatial uh, home of uh, rich merchants, so to say, imaginarily, and a fountain in the middle, and uh, flanked by two figures, Krishna and presumably Radha. Why I say presumably, we will come to Krishna's, um, uh, Krishna's. Uh, association with uh, many gopis and Radha also. So here, presumably Radha, and the background picture is that of Nathadwara. But in lower picture, uh, you see, uh, uh, sorry, in the left side picture, you see uh, Bali uh, uh, lying on, on the ground from Ramayana, and Ram is uh, already shot Bali uh, because there was a conflict between Bali and his brother Sugriva, uh, the monkey kings, and uh, uh, the, uh, uh, Bali was harassing Sugriva, uh, and therefore Rama had a revenge because Sugriva was Rama's associate. Now, uh, the, the story is not important. The background picture, background in the left picture is from, from, uh, from a German print. Uh, landscape and then uh, uh, things of uh, uh, the whole Indian mythological scene uh, takes place in these uh, in this German uh, landscape. Now these uh, collages acted as kind of vehicle, vehicles of cultural force, negotiating spaces between the sacred, like you see the mythology, sacred, the erotic, uh, particularly Radha and Krishna relationships, because the Agarwals, Vaishnav, they were Vaishnavs and they had largely uh, imagery in their homes of uh, Vaishnavite mythology. So the sacred, the erotic, the political, political meaning there were, there, it was a period of, uh, <clears throat> it was a period of nationalist movement and a lot of collages were done uh, in incorporating political moment of the time and colonial modern. Now, even up a picture on the right side, you see a palatial depiction. Now that is colonial modern in that sense that first of all, the architectural style is uh, very colonial and not only that, but the depiction that is, for example, uh, uh, this one point perspective, Indians did not know this perspective. This whole uh, uh, depiction of perspective came from colonial art school to India and from colonial uh, imagery that was circulating uh, in India. Next, please. Yeah, now <clears throat> I mentioned to you that, uh, that, there, uh, there, that uh, the, uh, the Vaishnava Agarwal Marwadis uh, were they had they lived in Shekhawati and they built palatial mansions in the towns of Mandava, uh, Bisau, uh, Kuchuru, Lakshmangarh, Ramgarh, Navalgarh, Sikar. These were various places uh, from where India's topmost uh, Marwadi uh, industrialists came, and <clears throat> uh, and most of these families were they belonged to uh, group social groups such as. Goenka, Kedia, Khaitan, Poda, Ruya, uh, etc. 
and uh, they were all, as I said, uh, Vaishnavas, and they were the patrons of these collages. But before I go to their collages, which I collected from various towns, which I just now mentioned in Shekhavati over several years, uh, and studied them, uh, I also uh, studied the wall paintings uh, in uh, uh, on on the walls of these havelis and these big palatial houses on the exterior and interior both. Uh, let me uh, talk about uh, uh, about how uh, these families became wealthy and how Shekhavati became uh, a small place in Rajasthan region, how it became uh, uh, so moneyed and what is this uh, brief history. Next, please. Here you can see Shekhavati uh, uh, marked with a, a blue circle. And <clears throat> when uh, somewhere around uh, uh, in the late 19th century or in the 19th century, when the central route from Bombay to Northern India fell to Marathas, a new route was opened and that was uh, starting from uh, Mumbai, but going northward straight away uh, to uh, to Bhavnagar and to, uh, uh, I mean, crossing Rajasthan desert and coming to Shekhavati and then taking right turn towards Banaras and from Banaras, uh, they, uh, the trade uh, uh, route was extended by water or, or, or uh, land uh, to Calcutta. So this is the new phenomenon. And as Shekhavati became a central place in, uh, uh, in this trade, the Banyans of Shekhavati who were commission agents, facilitators and things, they sort of uh, uh, <clears throat> made huge money in dealing with this trade. And eventually they themselves moved to Calcutta uh, and uh, became very well known that most of you know about. Next, please. Yeah, I have all, uh, next, uh, next please, after this. Now, uh, <clears throat> the, let me talk about the painted mansions of Shekhavati. Uh, they were kind of museums of hybrid Indo-British visual culture. Collage itself is a, a form of hybrid, um, uh, uh, hybrid uh, uh, visual entity that is the uh, Western colonial thing and Indian, they all come together. And that is how collage also happened. Now, the the Marwadis established offices and homes in Calcutta, but retained their family mansions in Shekhavati, where they went annually for community get together, like, you know, wedding or uh, some kind of uh, concert ceremony or any such thing. So they went there, but generally they lived in Calcutta uh, later on. And in Calcutta, they came across colonial novelties such as motor cars, buggies, gramophones. Uh, clockwork toys, uh, steamers, rifles, uniform soldiers, all sorts of things. And then a lot of these they brought to these uh, palatial homes and uh, displayed them. And therefore, they, their homes became somewhat like uh, somewhat like museums of this Indo-colonial culture. And uh, the two images that you see, uh, you can see in the top left one. Uh, uh, Europe, because there was big uh, British presence in Calcutta, so their depiction uh, appeared in the wall paintings of Shekhavati uh, in these Havelis. Uh, uh, those who have not been to Shekhavati would be amazed to know that interior and exteriors of these Havelis were so densely painted that almost no space was left uh, empty. They, these were like depicting the scenes of their own life and thing. And the right side uh, picture shows the coming of railway and particularly the Bikaner station. Now that scene of Bikaner railway station and the railway locomotive, et cetera, were also painted uh, in, in, uh, on the walls of uh, Shekhavati uh, home. So for example, this one is in a Haveli in Churu, the place called Churu, a small town called Churu. And uh, the Europeans that you see were painted in a Haveli in Bissau uh, in Shekhavati region. So uh, you see the, the hybrid uh, kind of uh, situation, visual situation that uh, exists in these. Next, please.
yeah. Now here, uh, there are uh, very interesting things. Uh, first of all, on the top left, you see um, uh, Europeans standing there, which were uh, seen in Calcutta, but were painted in Shekhavati. And uh, interestingly, that all of them are holding umbrellas. Now, umbrella, as it came to Calcutta, became an important part of what is known as Babu culture of Calcutta. The, the Indian upper class uh, elite also carried an umbrella. It was a sign of modernity and being westernized. And uh, uh, in, on the <clears throat> lower, uh, in the lower uh, image, you see very realistically depicted motor car and, uh, uh, and, uh, and one of the Marwadi's uh, uh, his self image as a as an owner of a car in Calcutta is also painted. So this is actually a part of wall painting. Now these paintings, the style of this painting came from uh, the local painters who are known as salads. And salads were kind of uh, uh, they were uh, they were construction workers and they were stone carvers and things. And they also they evolved a style of painting uh, which was uh, uh, which was practiced in these havelis. Next, please. Now, <clears throat> yeah. Now here uh, you have uh, iconization of the self and the other. Very interesting picture here. Uh, uh, two pictures. On the left side, you see one of the Shekhavati Banyans or one of the Shekhavati traders. He, his modernity that is, is expressed here as being a modern man living in Calcutta is expressed through the use of a uh, telescope. So, you know, uh, his self image of sitting in a colonial chair, colonial kind of chair, and uh, then wearing a fancy jacket and uh, also a very fancy cap and then looking through uh, a telescope to that is that is his self image as a modern man but the right side it is even more images uh, more interesting and that is the image of the other in their uh, in their uh, own conception so they have depicted a european woman and that is a, a, a kind of stereotyping in many paintings in Shekhavati, they have stereotyped Europeans. Uh, like also you, Indians were st stereotyped in, uh, in British culture, uh, repeat in European culture all throughout. So here there's an example of st stereotyping uh, a European woman. Now she's holding a, a, a baby boy and, but interestingly in her left hand and on your right side, she's holding a bottle of alcohol as if Europeans are always drinking, uh, you know, so, uh, so kind of stereotyping. So that was that idea of Europeans. And uh, this is how in the wall painting of Shekhavati, uh, this is in a Haveli in Sikar, a place called Sikar. And uh, this is the in, in Indian's uh, image of European woman uh, drinking, etc. So this kind of wall paintings were also found in Shekhavati. Next, please. Next, please. Yeah. Uh, now we come to Shekhavati collages, uh, uh, two, uh, two main formal types. Now, there were two types, as I mentioned earlier, either using a German print of the European landscape as ground and cut out figures from local Bengali printing presses as characters performing in this landscape. So that was one type. And second type was uh, using Nathadwara hand-painted pictures of landscape and architecture. We saw one of them uh, earlier as ground and cut out figures from uh, Brijvasi presses as, as uh, characters performing in these spaces. So the upper one, the, 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 the German type uh, was using Bengali printing press images, mythological, etc., Krishna and all. And uh, the, the other ones, uh, which had uh, painted, like you see in the picture in front of you, that is a Nathadwara painting. Now, 
uh, uh, two main thematic types in these were either these were dedicated to Krishna Leela and other Hindu mythologies or those having a political agenda. Both uh, by political agenda because most families of Shekhawati, they, they subscribe to the idea of uh, India's independence and uh, to some extent, uh, India becoming a Hindu nation after independence. So there are many, uh, many, uh, many evidences of that and thing. Now, very interesting here in collage is that space is turned into a place. Uh, listen again carefully. Space is turned into a place. How? Now, suppose you remove the figures that you see in front of you. Then it is just a space. It's a waterscape, a landscape, and just any space. But the moment Krishna is collaged onto that, it becomes a place of Krishna. So the background water can become Yamuna River or any of those places where Krishna Leela was performed or, or you know, Gopi's Vastraharan situation where Krishna uh, uh, played a prank on Gopis taking away their clothes. Now, so, so you see how space turns into a place in collage. And by collaging an image, an ordinary landscape, which is a general landscape, acquires the connotation of a place. And that is, I think, uh, uh, extremely uh, inter interesting part of collage as such. Next, please. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, this is an example of German print. The background print is German. That is the Rhein Rheinstein, Rheinstein Castle uh, on the river Rhine in Germany. <clears throat> so a lot of these German prints used to come to India. Uh, and these were framed and uh, put in people's homes. A large bulk of these were found in Shekhawati. I myself purchased, acquired uh, from dealers uh, because the Havelis were now not lived in so much. And a lot of things which were in these Havelis were sold, the furniture and pictures and all. So for my study, I acquired nearly 100 uh, collages of this sort and uh, uh, also uncollaged German print that were coming in bulk uh, to Shekhawati. Now, why would a German landscape or any foreign landscape be used for depiction of Indian mythology? Because gods could not live in ordinary day-to-day -day space where ordinary human beings lived. And therefore, the spaces in which gods dwelled was celestial. And that means elsewhere space. It's a space somewhere else. It is a heavenly space. It's not a mortal space around us. And therefore, this European landscape, this European landscape, or even, uh, even Nathadwara print, they were kind of spaces which did not exist in reality. And therefore, uh, I think uh, these were used to depict that these are celestial spaces. Now, <clears throat> uh, German prints, European landscape printed in Germany, oleographs, cut out figures from mythological print. Uh, these were all collage, uh, collage to, uh, together. So here you can see uh, the goddess Saraswati descending on Rheinstein uh, uh, castle and worshippers are standing there to, to receive her. So it is a, a kind of metaphorically a, a celestial space that is constructed by use of a foreign landscape uh, uh, here. Next, please. And the second is uh, uh, the, the idealized, uh, idealized space of divine Leelas in Shekhavati collages. Now, this is like uh, Krishna's erotic liaison with gopis and uh, things because uh, the, the Agarwals followed Vaishnavism as their main faith. And therefore, most of these collages in, uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, most of these collages had the theme of Radha and uh, Radha and Krishna. Now you can see in this picture, uh, this single point perspective, this and also see the line of cypress trees, uh, both sides. 
and uh, so you know these things came you see indian nathadwara was also a place where traditional miniature paintings were made and indians if you look at rajasthani painting you will realize old rajasthani painting that they never understood perspective or they had their own ideal idealized uh, notion of perspective but what you see here is geometric perspective correct perspective and that came from that came from colonial art schools and what did uh, what did it do this perspective that came from colonial art school and western paint that the a uh, perspectival images in rajput miniature painting for example and completely idealized was turned into realistic and as a result uh, in a way uh, this fractured the hindu dream world so the coming of realism through colonial art school fractured the hindu dream world in the sense it was idealized world it was a realistic world but now slowly uh, through those lessons uh, a, a kind of new uh, new visuality came and that got combined by collage with uh, uh, old uh, uh, traditional kind of images so romantic scenery with art deco mentions lawns fountains potted plants garden uh, garden arches cypress lined avenues lamp posts uh, all these are colonial elements that were imbibed in, in a in a space appropriate for depicting leelas of krishna uh, uh, is sort of metaphorically celestial space was created by these collages next please now uh, here uh, you can also read and i read it with you what is happening i'll tell you what is happening in the pictures but uh, actually they they are legitimizing consumption of modernity in terms of radha krishna liaison collage is showing radha and krishna listening to gramophone or vastraharan scene now uh, in the lower picture you can see that radha and krishna are quietly seated on the side and in front of them there is a gramophone line and same that uh, uh, single point perspective etc the colonial element is over there and uh, uh, so krishna has for a while put his flute aside uh, in favor of listening to gramophone uh, on the in the other picture also the the renowned uh, uh, motif of krishna mythology is vastraharana which is krishna playing a prank on on the gopis that as they were taking bath somewhere in the forest and that he comes and takes away his, their clothes and then insists that they come and collect the clothes from him so now that was like in somewhere in a forest or somewhere outside but here you see the whole place is turned into a, a swimming pool of a well to do merchant so uh, what i said just now the legitimizing consumption of modernity in terms of radha krishna liaison collage is showing radha and krishna uh, in vastraharan scene so <clears throat> collage as i said right in the beginning it does <clears throat> all sorts of things because two unrelated elements when they are brought together and put into a relationship they brought together and put into another relationship then many issues like uh, uh, religion politics social eroticism uh, mythology everything come together in a different combination next please uh yeah now i will uh, i'm showing you several pictures together and i have titled these as transgressive embrace that is what is transgressive embrace this is kind of promiscuous circulation of the female via the collage now 
what do I mean by promiscuous circulation of the female via the collage? Now, if you have an image of Rama, just alone, single image of Rama standing, from his iconography, you know uh, that he is having a bow and arrow or his complexion is blue or many such features. So he's recognizable. If you have Krishna standing, is a male, uh, either he's playing flute or uh, in his crown, you have a peacock feather or any such thing. So Krishna is identifiable without any, any uh, accompanying person. But the female identity of the consorts, for example, was only circulating in the sense that Sita by, by herself is not Sita unless she's shown, otherwise she's just a, a female. So she, she gets her identity, uh, identity uh, in conjunction with her uh, male consort. And this circulating identity, so these collages, what they were doing were, was that they, the identity of the female was circulating. Uh, let me see a few examples. Now, uh, let us see on your left side, there is an image of, uh, uh, <clears throat> just a yeah, left side top, there is an image of a woman standing and a man standing next to her. The man is, is in, the, uh, in the garb of a, uh, of a uh, mendicant. The story is, this is a complete print. It's not a collage. It's just a full picture as such. Now, the person who is in the garb of a mendicant is actually Krishna. And Krishna, in, you see, in Bengali tradition, uh, Radha was married. In other several other traditions in India, Radha was not married. So in Bengali tradition, Radha was already married. And therefore, Krishna, in order to uh, seek meeting with her, he would change his garb and come as a mendicant. And Radha would come out and give him arms. Uh, under the pretext of giving arms, she would be able to meet Krishna. Now, this is also known as kind of Chadma Leela in, in Vaishnava literature, particularly Bengali Vaishnava literature, Chadma Leela. Chadma Leela meaning Leela of concealment. That is, uh, Krishna comes uh, in concealment. He comes concealed as a, as a mendicant. And he made. So now, in this picture, the woman is definitely Radha because she is uh, uh, she under, uh, under the framework of this story, she's Radha because she is with Krishna in the garb of a uh, mendicant. Now, if she is Radha here, then on the next right side to her, uh, you see there is a picture in which uh, she is standing, the same woman, same cut out, actually cut out from the same uh, picture, uh, is, uh, shows Radha standing over there and Krishna seated there and there's another woman there in the background. Now, uh, as I said, the identity of the female was circulating uh, through collage uh, what was ha what is happening here? Who is Radha and which one is a gopi? Now, this is what I was saying, that there was a promiscuous circulation and, uh, uh, and creating ambivalence, who is Radha and who is gopi? As I said, and I think the feminists would wonder about this, uh, this uh, use of collage and uh, circulating identity. Moreover, see the background on the right side print top, uh, it's a European landscape, and uh, in that, these figures are collage. Take another example below. Uh, on the left side, there, there is Krishna playing uh, flute, and uh, presumably Radha uh, seated next to him. But that portion from that print, Radha and Krishna, is cut out and pasted in in, in European landscape over here, and uh, the figure of Radha, which was which we saw in the first picture, it is now that she is standing far away. So is she Radha, or as she was Radha in the first picture, 
now in the in this picture there is another woman with krishna supposedly radha and therefore so what collage did as i said earlier that uh, that collage was creating uh, very strange combinations etc uh, and uh, uh, talking about promise uh, in this case promiscuous circulation uh, uh, and creating ambivalence next please and these were all sacred images and these collages were in the homes of uh, uh, orthodox vaishnavas uh, so okay now here too uh, we have uh, uh, an image and left side image is a full image without any collage or cut out again uh, same thing of chadma leela here uh, radha is standing over there uh, and krishna has come as a mendicant dressed as mendicant but radha is angrily turned her face away from krishna because he is uh, uh, he is uh, always going to other gopis and therefore radha is angry now that whole tableau which is over here is cut out and put uh, on the left side in a in an american print uh, 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 background print uh, based on a painting by uh, 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 atkinson atkinson fox uh, that, that must have been printed in germany but this was a very famous american uh, popular artist print now that tableau of radha turning her face away Uh, is on the left side but the cause of her anger is on the right side that krishna is now with another gopi so like that collage was used for a kind of narration of krishna mythology in various ways and uh, 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 so collage had a possibility very different than traditional rajasthani uh, painting next please yeah now uh, <clears throat> again similar combinations are seen on top left you see uh, a female seated female figure in the company of krishna on the right side there is a very interesting uh, picture of a german print um, and uh, uh, as i mentioned to you earlier that radha was already married in bengali tradition and these pictures which are cut out and pasted are from bengali prints and therefore radha, radha meeting krishna uh, secretly was a, a kind of uh, adulterous act in the sense that she was married and she was in the company of krishna so in bengali tradition there is also a story particularly in popular culture that that when radha was in the company of krishna in the forest somewhere somebody saw a woman saw her and she went and complained to her husband that your wife is some in the company of somebody else or in company of krishna so the husband wanted to come and see so you can see on your right side uh, in front of the trees right extreme right side that there is a man and a woman that uh, they uh, that she brought the husband to show her the whole narrative is completely made with collages here now with, with collage here now the thing is that uh, radha got frightened in according to the story that she saw the husband coming from distance so krishna said don't worry and then he took the form of kali and uh, uh, radha said i am only worshiping kali in the forest so this is a very popular bengali story but with collage they have uh, uh, used the figure of radha uh, here and also radha in the top left picture but interestingly in the bottom left picture uh, in a snowy snow uh, clad landscape uh, you see in the left side there is ram and ram and uh, in the company of sita who is that sita the same figure which is now seated above in two pictures as as uh, radha with krishna so i was talking about the circulating identity 
which was attained by the technique of collage and uh, um, and uh, Vaishnav mythology was sort of reconstructed in uh, in another landscape in uh, with uh, foreign images and things like that. And that was something amazing that was happening in Shekhavati in Rajasthan and uh, in the neighboring and also in Calcutta. Many homes of Vaishnavas in Calcutta, Vaishnav merchants in Calcutta had similar uh, 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 similar uh, images. Next, please. No. Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, this image is a, uh, it pertains to political uh, collage, to which I will come in a second. But I would like to say a little bit about the patrons themselves. Um, in uh, around uh, 1860, in Bombay, when there was a uh, there was a lot of uh, sexual corruption within the Vaishnava fold. Several young people in Bombay, uh, they uh, became aware of this, uh, meaning that, that, that the various Vaishnava Goswamis, they were exploiting women under, women under, the, under the pretext of being uh, being incarnations of Vishnu, uh, of Vishnu, and the women who came over there, they were uh, sort of sexually exploited, and there was a major, uh, major, major issue about this to the extent that uh, uh, a case was filed in Bombay High Court in 1862, and it was known as Maharaj uh, Libel or Libel suit. And this, uh, a report of this suit was published, which I have a copy from 1860. It's a, it's a copy which is completely breaking down. I can't even turn the leaves properly, but it's an extraordinarily uh, uh, important and interesting uh, volume that I, I obtained for my research. Now, according to the uh, uh, case detail, uh, Goswamis saw themselves as incarnations of Krishna. All devotees, all devotees to have Sakhi Bhava, meaning men or women, they would have Sakhi Bhava, uh, meaning uh, a Bhava of a sort of a girlfriend, so to say, uh, towards, uh, towards Goswamis. The report also mentions that half chewed betel uh, beta leaf half chewed with saliva was taken out by Goswamis, I'm sorry for this detail, uh, from their mouth and put in the mouth of the women who came there uh, 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 as, a, as a prasad of Krishna. This is detailed in that report, a copy that I have, which is a case detail of the Bombay High Court published in 1862. Then devotees uh, who were willingly, uh, devotees willingly offered their wives, also is mentioned in the report, to get uh, 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 offspring that was uh, uh, divine, sort of. And then uh, many, uh, it is mentioned that many of these Goswamis contacted venereal diseases because of promiscuity. And, uh, and uh, those who opposed coming to uh, the Goswamis were often excommunicated, also a part of that report uh, from the cast. And, uh, and with all this, when this was publi published, and uh, when young, young people of the Vaishnava community, they began to object to uh, these, kind of, uh, these kind of practices. And uh, uh, there was a journal that was brought out by the Bhatia and Luhana communities, both Vaishnava of Bombay. They brought out a journal called Satya Prakash or Satya Sodhak. And uh, this was also uh, around in 19, uh, sorry, 1860s. And uh, uh, as they brought out all these in the journal, uh, uh, the Vaishnava Goswamis filed a suit and uh, defamation suit. And that became known as, uh, as Maharaj libel, libel suit. So uh, there was, uh, uh, so, so there were uh, many of these things also 
happening with regard to uh, this uh, kind of uh, promiscuity that was uh, flagrant in Vaishnava community once upon a time, and then reforms were uh, brought in. Uh, next, please. Now, there was more to say, but I think I would uh, now go to political collages because we're losing time uh, on that. Uh, there's much more interesting information, but now I'll go to another kind of collages. That is um, from Vaishnavism to, uh, to uh, uh, pet, uh, Vaishnava uh, pet, uh, patriotism, Vaishnavism to Vaishnava patriotism. Now, in Shekhavati, in terms of political affiliation, uh, one might say that almost all Shekhavati uh, merchant families were Vaishnav and they were all um, uh, kind of in favor of uh, Hindu nationalism in that period. And uh, <clears throat> one of the most popular figures was uh, Subhash Chandra Bose because he sort of uh, uh, insisted on uh, obtaining freedom from the British with other means than peaceful means. And he became extremely popular uh, uh, and innumerable images of Subhash Chandra have come out from, uh, from the Havelis of Shekhavati. Here, the figure of Subhash is collaged onto uh, the Nathadwara style of architecture. Next, please. Next, please. Yeah. Um, now, it's a very, very interesting and extremely politically charged uh, collage here. On the left side, the image is not a collage. It's a complete image uh, by itself. What do we see in this image, left side? There is Subhash Chandra, uh, his bust uh, in the clouds uh, far away, and in the background, uh, the red fort, uh, which was meant to be the well, battle, uh, meant to be the place for battle cry of Subhash Chandra, Chalo Dilli, uh, you know. And below you see in the picture, there is Bharat Mata, uh, um, who is now shown as Hindu goddess. So it's not a secular mother India, meaning the map of India. It is uh, a, a real, because she's holding a tri trident in her hand. And uh, of course, the, uh, her iconography, there's a lion. Lion and tiger are always mixed up in Indian uh, uh, psyche. So here there's a lion, sometimes they show tiger in many of the images, but that's immaterial. Now there is also a dragon below Bharat Mata and wearing a bow tie of the British flag. And uh, on the right side, uh, so many uh, people have sacrificed themselves and offered their head, which are uh, rolling below. And Subhash Chandra has, is offering his chopped head himself to and wearing his uh, army uniform, his own army uniform, and offering his head to Bharat Mata. Now, this is a complete image by itself. Now, the adherence of Vaishnavism uh, a collage that was patronized here is very interesting. It is selected and it is kind of uh, strategically selected images. Some are added and some are removed. Uh, what is removed is the Islamic uh, red fort in the background. Subhash's <coughs> bust is just floating as a kind of central image in the background. Left side, of course, uh, Mother uh, India is there, and uh, then uh, Subhash's self-sacrifice is shown. But what is interesting is the cutting out of the, uh, the red fort and addition of Krishna playing flute over here. So Subhash's self-sacrifice to Mother India is now, in a way, Vaishnavized by addition of Krishna figure uh, here. So, uh, and the political leanings of the Shekhavati traders was towards, uh, somewhat towards Hindu uh, nationalism, which must have changed over time. But this we are talking about uh, another period. 
so collage could as i said right in the beginning could play uh, collage could act as a very strategic language both in terms of mythology that we saw mythological collages and now politically even more so next please uh, almost every single house that i visited in various towns of shekhavati and then the shops of the dealers who are selling furnitures and picture furniture and pictures and other thing from havelis which were sold uh, they uh, i have found at least 70 to 80 uh, images of uh, uh, of golwalkar and hedgewar the founders of uh, rashtriya swayamsevak sangh rss so there was a uh, connection to uh, to this politically this is an uh, another very interesting next please next image yeah now this image is also very interesting that uh, here the background painting is natwara painting depicting uh, emperor akbar's mausoleum at sikandra uh, and but what is happening in the mausoleum krishna is standing on the grave and uh, gopis are emerging from uh, from various directions in a way to say that they have captured our land and we recapture from 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 them so they are the very strong political message so collage as i said right in the beginning that very strategic language why i spent so much time working on this work that this is the only form of of art call it art or whatever visual culture in which a very direct political messaging happens otherwise i think in traditional indian painting uh, this white traditional until the arrival of completely modernist art in india there wasn't any uh, any kind of work uh, that uh, was early 20th century which uh, sort of dealt with political issues except these collages next please now here again in line with that uh, uh, another political collage that is gandhi uh, is seated in this uh, nadwara painting uh, and um, uh, cypress line uh, landscape at the back uh, uh, and gandhi is uh, in kind of thoughtful pose uh, posture and rama perhaps unaware gandhi is unaware of his presence rama is shown both are cut out from somewhere and placed over here uh, that is gandhi is being blessed by rama of course no doubt that gandhi's personal fate did connect himself uh, him with rama but here there is a very direct uh, uh, direct appropriation of uh, gandhi to vaishnavism and last image next please yeah this image uh, is uh, image shows nehru riding a uh, nehru riding a uh, horse now i bought this image not from a dealer but from the house of a particular family in bhivani uh, in uh, in haryana because most of the uh, uh, most of the banya families which i mentioned earlier a lot of them migrated from Uh, 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 haryana uh, 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 bhivani and uh, nearby places to shekhavati uh, when the trade became lucrative now this painting i saw in the house of a uh, uh, very renowned uh, vaishnava uh, agarwal family and when i went to that house and i saw this picture my mouth literally watered so i asked them what is happening here so the person uh, an elderly person said very clear krishna is depicted here as incarnation of vishnu's incarnation of kali uh, so kali incarnation the future incarnation of vishnu uh, and um, uh, so here nehru uh, sorry not kali kalki so kalki incarnation of vishnu uh, 
Kalki is the future incarnation, and in iconography, Kalki is riding a horse. So uh, he his explanation was that Nehru as the future of India. Now look at the political connotations that continuously emerge from this new technique of putting together images consciously and uh, for a particular agenda, uh, which uh, which uh, was in the uh, uh, in the minds of the patrons, and uh, therefore uh, I was saying in the beginning that collage is a very strategic language, uh, and that use of that collage here. And as I began with modernist European collage, that was very different. Though there too there were political messages emerging uh, from collating material from the street and uh, uh, from the uh, from the uh, bourgeois society of uh, the, uh, Western culture. So this is uh, the last image. And thank you very much for uh, listening to me. Thanks.